This new visitor sequence accomplishes three important things. Number one, it initiates follow-up as soon as possible. Number two, it introduces guests to your church's values and DNA. And number three, it puts your new visitor in touch personally with your church's pastor or another leader on your staff. I've got a bunch of freebies for you in this video, a pre-written email and text message template, a pre-written announcement script, a website plugin, and downloads for all of those coming later in the video. As for our follow-up system itself, it all starts with a woman named Jessica. She's visiting our church for the first time. Jessica is new. We'd like to connect with her in a meaningful way if she's interested in that. And so this process starts with a connect card, a color-coded card placed in the pew or seat back where Jessica is seated. The invitation I like to use in service is locate the blue card and scan the QR code on the back. I like to say blue card instead of connect card. Less jargon is better. I'm not gonna say any more about the Connect card though because I already did an entire video dedicated to how to make this. I even give you the template for free and show you how to customize it. That video is linked on the screen and in the description. Back to Jessica. She picks up the blue card and scans the QR code with her phone and she is then taken to our website and sees this screen with a heading that says connect to our church and copy that reads, quote, new to our church? We're so glad you're here to celebrate. We'd love to pledge a $5 donation on your behalf to a charity of your choice. Supporting other charities is something we do every week and we'd love to include you in that process. Simply click the button below and fill out the form. From there, we'll send you an email asking which charity you wish us to donate to and that's it end quote. And then she sees a button with a call to action that says click here. Now we're going to talk about the free plugin needed to make a page like this on your website in just a moment. But first, let's talk about this $5 donation thing that I've got going on here. Because here's the thing, I am not a fan of the mug with your church's logo on it as a gift to new visitors. I will save that hot take, coffee pun intended, for another day and another video. Instead of talking about what I don't like about the mug or church merch gift to a new visitor, let me tell you why I love pledging a $5 donation on behalf of a guest to your church. First, it demonstrates that you are a generous church that is outwardly focused on the world and community, not just inwardly focused on your own self-interests. And remember, this is your first interaction with Jessica, so she's still trying to get a feel for what your church is all about. And what you decide to do in this first interaction will say a lot about what your church truly values. Choosing to make this first interaction about giving to others and not promotion for yourself. Not only does that make a lasting impression, but it also establishes your church's brand, a brand of generosity and care for others. Because branding is not your logo on a mug, it's what others think and say about your church. It gets better though, because another reason I love the $5 donation is that it invites Jessica into the act of giving and allows her to choose which charity she wants to support. And this is key. Don't pre-select a charity ahead of time. Instead, choose a number of registered charities that your church is proud to support, and then allow Jessica to choose from that pre-selected list. This ensures that a guest to your church doesn't select a charity that doesn't align with your church's values, but it also sets a precedent with your new visitor that you are partners from day one. You invite Jessica into the act of giving to be a participant. Because this is what we want in our churches, right? Active participants who are involved, not passive spectators that just sit in pews. Let's set that precedent then from the first interaction we have with guests. Now, there is one important disclaimer I'll make about donating $5 on behalf of a new visitor. If you do this carelessly, it can sometimes appear as though you are withholding donations to worthwhile causes unless someone gives you their contact info. And we don't want that, which is why in the copy on the info card, I have this very important line, quote, supporting other charities is something we do every week and we'd love to include you in that process. The implication here is clear. This money gets donated regardless of your visit to our church. We'd simply like to invite you into the process of directing where some of it goes. And again, I'll have all of this pre-written copy for you in the download link coming later in the video. This is important though, because while we certainly want to connect with Jessica on her first visit to our church, maybe she's not ready for that just yet. We can do everything in our power as a church to make connection easy, but maybe Jessica has had a bad church experience in her past. Maybe she's just not ready to give out her contact info on the first visit. In that case, we still want to leave a good lasting impression in her mind. Too often, our guest follow-up sequences only focus on the people that do give us their contact info. What about those that don't? Just because they didn't upon first visit doesn't mean they won't in the future, and so we need to consider those people also. Very rarely are relationships linear, and a simple line that emphasizes, yes, we do support other charities every week in our church. If you want to be a part of that, great. If not, that's cool too. It goes a long way. 
Let's get back to this screen right here. This is called an info card. And info cards are part of a free website plugin we built for churches, The Launcher by Nucleus. Nucleus is our church website builder. We like to call it the premium church website builder for small and mid-sized churches because it comes preloaded with features like this, specifically for churches to help you build things like your new visitor follow-up sequence. The Launcher by Nucleus works on any website builder. It's free for every church forever. I'll link install guides to all the most common website builders in the description below. Uh, Nucleus is a website builder itself, yes, but the launcher works on any website, even those not hosted by Nucleus. What's the catch? No catch. Nucleus is a profitable church tech platform. Thousands of churches build and host their websites using Nucleus, and because of that, we're able to give back to churches. The launcher is one of the ways we do that. Once the launcher is installed on your website, you can begin building info cards. Now, what is an info card? It's a way to present quick pieces of information while still prioritizing invitation. So just look at our info card in our new visitor sequence. You'll see very little navigation. There's just a single column of text with one image. There's no other place to really scroll or be distracted. And then just one call to action. So the point of this info card is to make an invitation without distractions. Think of info cards like a prologue to a book almost. They set the stage for what's about to come. Creating an info card in the launcher is easy. Here I am in the Nucleus dashboard. After you've created your free account, click on Next Steps, then Info Cards. Here's the one I've already created. If I select this dropdown and click Copy Sharing Link, that's the link that I want to use for my QR code on the Connect card. And again, I talk about how to do that in the video dedicated to the Connect card linked in the description below, so check that out. If I click into the info card, I've got an image, headline, body text, and then the action. And here I've connected the action at the bottom of the info card to a Nucleus flow. Flows are our version of forms. If you're using another form builder, just select URL and then paste in the link to that form. This is the next step in our new visitor sequence. We go connect card to an info card to a form. Let's build this form now. We keep it really short and simple here, but if there's one tip I can give you in making this form successful, it's this. Ask for information one step at a time, because it is not uncommon for someone to see all the info you're asking for on a long form and then just abandon the page altogether. The data from JotForm supports this, quote, asking for information one step at a time in a form instead of all at once translated to a 36% stronger conversion rate when compared to traditional forms. At the end of the day, we want more completed forms, and a 36% increase is not insignificant. That's low-hanging fruit. Let's take advantage of it. Because I don't want Jessica scanning the QR code, clicking through the info card, only to be presented with this long, nasty form, not optimized for mobile, that she then just clicks away from. All of these details matter. So here's the flow I have built inside of Nucleus. Again, you can use any form builder here. I ask for name, email, phone number, which is set as optional, so folks can skip it if they prefer, a field asking people to share a little bit about themselves and their story, and then a little note that reads, we have something for you. After you submit your information below, watch for an email hitting your inbox in the next couple of minutes. In that email, we'll be asking you which charity you'd like us to donate $5 to on your behalf, so make sure to reply to that message. This is crucially important because we want to initiate follow-up with this new visitor as soon as possible. So by telling them to check their email inbox, we're setting that expectation ahead of time. In Nucleus, I'm going to create a messages campaign now that connects to this flow so that everyone who fills out the flow gets this email we're going to create automatically and immediately. Here is the message itself. The subject line is for Jessica or whatever the first name of your guest is. This is a tremendously potent subject line. It's personal and it dovetails so nicely off of the expectation that we just set when we told them that we'd be sending them something just for them. The email itself reads, quote, Hey Jessica, this is Brady from Life Abundant Church. Thanks for filling out our Connect card. Here's what you need to know about Life Abundant Church. We love generosity, and we think one of the best ways to live like Jesus is to give. And knowing this, we'd love to make a $5 donation on your behalf to a charity of your choice. Supporting other charities is something we do every week, and we'd love to include you in that process. So again, emphasizing that this donation will be made either way, and that we just want Jessica to help direct where it will go. Back to the email, simply reply to this email with your choice from the list of registered charities below and we'll make a donation on your behalf. Then I've got the list of registered charities you'd wanna put in the ones that your church's values align with. Talk soon, Brady Shearer, Life Abundant Church. P.S. If you have any questions at all for me, Jessica, don't hesitate to ask. When you reply to this email, it will be sent directly to me and I'll make sure to respond as soon as I can. 
All right, so that's our follow-up email, inviting Jessica to respond, letting us know which of the pre-selected charities she'd like us to donate to. When she does that, she'll get connected directly to the church's pastor or a real person on staff, which is the whole point of all of this. And by the way, I just showed you this example being done through email. If you prefer to send this as a text, by all means, uh, the reason I like sending it by email is because when Jessica replies, your church's sending address will be marked as a safe sender in her inbox. So now, the next time you send her an email, because she responded to the first one she ever got from you, those future emails won't land in her spam folder. This contributes to a better overall email deliverability profile for your church, which is such a valuable thing in a world of over-aggressive spam filters. Importantly, you'll want to send this email from a real person's name as well. So here I have it as Brady from Life Abundant, not just Life Abundant Church. Final piece of this puzzle is a pre-written announcement script I have for you. I would repeat this every week at your church. This is the precursor to the entire sequence. Quote, if you're new with us at church today, I especially want to welcome you to Life Abundant. We're so glad you're here. To celebrate, we'd love to pledge a $5 donation on your behalf to a charity of your choice. This is something that we do every week here at Life Abundant, and it's a really simple process. Simply locate the blue card and scan the QR code on the back, follow the prompts, and we'll send you an email asking which charity you want us to donate to. And that's it. Again, you can do this right now. Just scan the QR code on the back of the blue card. It helps if you're holding the Connect card while you share this announcement and also having a matching slide on the screen during the announcement. Templates for both, again, in that Connect card video I've mentioned. Why do I call this the ultimate church guest follow-up system? Well, because there are a myriad of benefits. You're seeing them all on the screen right now. If you need help convincing your senior leadership or just articulating why a sequence like this aligns with the church's mission and values, screenshot what you're seeing right now. We talked in depth in this video about the what and the how, but it is the why that should always direct all of our decisions being made in church. There's a QR code on your screen right now. Scan this and you'll find a page where you can enter your email to gain access to a downloadable folder that includes the pre-written announcement copy, the pre-written follow-up message that you can send via text or my preference email, and a link where you can create your free account to start using the launcher by Nucleus. Links for this download are also in the description. I mentioned that I wasn't gonna get on my soapbox and talk about why I truly do not like giving new visitors to church mugs with the church's logo on it. That's why this has no logo on it. But don't worry, I did save it for this video. You can just click on the screen to watch me get needlessly worked up about mugs.